is, as Pastor Huey said, I'm, I'm not from the U.S. I'm from Colombia, South America. So if you think my English is bad now, oh my goodness, 20 years ago, my friends were like, what are you talking about? What? 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 So, um, and it's, um, uh, it's been a journey and, um, and it's an honor and a privilege. I, I don't know if we have the slides, right? Okay, let's see what we have there. I, I mean, we're going to show some, some things here. Uh, this is my family. I want you to take a look. I'm going to put it on the side. Uh, man, I, I marry up way, way, way up. So, so my oldest is 21 on Wednesday. Uh, he just moved uh, to Tennessee. He's going to attend college in Nashville. My second one next to me, his name is David. He's uh, 20. And my little guy, the big surprise, he's five. Okay? So 21, 20. And I was like, yeah, we're suddenly going to get, we're going to enjoy life again. And the five year old came out. So it's okay. So um, some of you would say, what happened? Oh, come on. You know what happened. Uh, so. Um, and uh, it is a joy. So we have Daniel, David, and Caleb. This is David, my second son. He's now 20. He's 20, yeah. This is a two-year-old picture. He's 18 in this picture. But uh, when he was three years old, he was diagnosed to be in the spectrum of autism. And uh, as you can imagine, I mean, uh, it was shocking for us. We were planting a church in Honolulu. We didn't know what to do with this. And Man, and, and among the, all the things that the doctors were telling us and this, the experts were telling us, they said, well, one of the things with David is he, he doesn't speak. He probably will never speak. Um, and we were like, oh, God, you know. So of the many things that we pray, one of our prayer, prayer, prayer points was, Lord, help David to speak. And we pray that every day for every night before going to bed. We pray that for days. We pray that for weeks. We pray that prayer for months. We prayed that prayer for years. And when he was about seven years old, suddenly God answered prayer and he started talking. And he was talking and we were like, wow, he's speaking. And he was just great and awesome. And yeah, we were so excited in that. And it was so much bigger of a miracle than our prayer changed. Our prayer now was, oh, Lord, please help him to shut up once in a while. Because thank you, Lord, but this is way too much, Lord. And, <laughs> So, so, and even today, if you meet him, he will not stop unless you ask him to stop. So, uh, it is a joy. Um, they usually travel with me. We only live like an hour and a half away from here, but we have church today in our home. So, they get ready. They, we have a little church service. We're starting a church in our home, and it's a joy to be there. But David is a blessing for us. Now, uh, we have been in this journey of following Jesus for quite a bit um, I can't believe you're 19 years married. I mean, you look so young. And uh, I'm going to be 23 this year. So I look also very young. Okay, so they're close by. But um, it, it's been a blessing. The best 23 years of her life. Those are, those are pastor jokes. Those are dumb jokes. Anyway. But um, we've been following Jesus. And we've been so blessed. But how many of you know that following Jesus it also is challenging? Okay? It's hard. You know, and, and it's important that we as followers of Jesus recognize, yeah, you know what? We're going to have challenging times and we've discovered and, you know, it's, it's tough and, and it's important to know that. In fact, there's a great story that we're going to be in the, in the Word of God today. If you have your Bibles, go to Mark chapter 40. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry about it. We're going to have them here on the screen. And Mark chapter 40 is a pretty cool story. Um, it's about following Jesus when we face storms. Everybody say storms. storms. Storms are pretty tough, right? But before we read this story, let me give you a context of the story, okay? Before Mark tells us the story of the storm, Jesus is teaching in the, what is called the, the, the Sea of Galilee, right? And it's a, it's a fisherman town, Galilee. They call it Sea of Galilee because, you know, fishermen, they like to exaggerate, right? You ask a, a fisherman, hey, do you cut do you cut something? Yeah, how big it was? It was like this. Okay. So when it was really like this, right? So they call it Sea of Galilee, because actually it's a little pond. It's a lake. Okay. It's not a sea of Galilee. It's a real lake. And 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 it's interesting about the story. Jesus loved to go to Galilee 
there was a lot of people with needs. This is where people were broken and there were no wealthy people. There were suffering people, sick people. And, and, and Jesus is preaching and he's gathering all these folks that are kind of following him. And the crowd got so big that what Jesus did is like, it's hard. I mean, we don't have microphones like this, you know, like we don't have stuff like that. So what Jesus did was, I'm going to go into a boat right in the shore and he got into the boat and you guys sit over there and I'm going to be teaching the kingdom of God from the boat in the shore to all of you. You guys picture that? So imagine the background, a beautiful lake, the boat, probably not as, maybe, a, maybe, a, maybe the size of this stage here, not many people will fit, maybe 12, 16 people probably fit in a boat uh, and, and, and he's teaching to probably thousands of people. Now, you got the picture. Now, he's teaching all day long. I'm going to be teaching 35, 40 minutes around there, right, Pastor Hugh? That's what I say. Don't go after that because people get hungry. I get it. I understand that. <laughs> and, 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 uh, but imagine Jesus teaching all day long. I mean, you, you need to know this. Jesus was a good teacher because I'm not going to sit all day long. You know, you have to be really good. Maybe some snacks here and there. You know, I can do that, right? But Jesus was the best teacher ever lived. And he captured the hearts of people. People were just like, wow, he teaches with authority. He's ministered to my heart. It's like he's speaking to me. And my prayer is, then as we go into the word today, today you will experience that Jesus. Not me. Not the weird guy that was from Colombia and then lives in Nashville and with a weird accent talking to you. My prayer is that Jesus himself today, because I believe some of you need to hear not my word, but the word of Jesus in your heart. And that's my prayer for you today. May you receive the word of the Lord for you today. Amen. Mark chapter 4. Let's start in verse 35. It says here now, remember all day preaching. And he starts saying, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Everybody say the other side. The other side. That is interesting. And Jesus will start by saying, hey, guys. Let's go to the other side of uh, the lake. And I love how he says disciples here. The word disciples means follower. Jesus is saying to those that follow him, to those that were like clinging to his words. Guys, let's go to the other side. Yes. And he meant more than just, just traveling. He meant more. Listen, on this side, you have heard my words and, and, and you've been blessed as you've been in this side of the lake. You've been, you've been, you've been blessed. You have become comfortable. Uh, you find the best spot. You find uh, good things here and you have learned many things. But I want to take you from the blessing that you have right now into a greater blessing. I want to take you from the glory that you're enjoying here to a greater glory. So come, follow me. Let's cross the lake to the other side. New adventures are waiting for us yeah. over there. New greater rewards are waiting on the yeah. other side. Come, follow me yeah. to the other side. Now, yeah. I don't know how that, what that means to you right now. If God is telling you right now, dear friend, come with me to the other side. I don't know what that means to you. Mm. But maybe what God is saying, hey, I want to improve your marriage. Yeah. I want to bring greater joy in your career, in your yeah. job. You know, he's getting a little like boring and I want to bring greater joy there. I want to prosper you. I want to bless you. I want to give you, I want to give you not necessarily what you want, but I want to give you everything that you really need in this season. I want to bring you to the next level. As a, as a woman, as a man, as a young man, as a young woman. I want to give you something greater. So uh, let's cross to the other side. Now, some of you that are dissatisfied what is happening on this side, you will say, Jesus, I'm going. Because uh, yeah, my marriage needs help. <laughs> yes, Jesus, uh, I mean, the inflation, the bills and all that. I need to go to the other side. Uh, Jesus, yeah, you know, like uh, the guy that I'm dating, yeah, Jesus, take me to the other side. Uh, you know, you, you may have a lot of things. You may be dissatisfied with the, uh, this side and you say, yes, Lord, I want to go. Some of you may say, you know what? This side is pretty good. Come on now. This side is, is actually really good. God, things are good on this side. Yeah. 
But I'm hungry for more of you, Jesus. And if you tell me that there's something greater for me, and you tell me to follow you, I want to follow you. Now, saying that, how many of you would say, Jesus, I want to go to the other side? Okay, Pastor Hugh is the only one. Okay, another person here. Only two are going to the other side. So I'm going to spend the rest of the time here convincing you that he's going to bless you if you follow Jesus to the other side. Okay? So watch this. Verse 36. Verse 36 is pretty powerful. Next slide, please. Okay, verse 36. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind. So only those that are really following Jesus are going with him in this boat. All the other boats followed. Then soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to be filled with water. Now, I know that we're far away from a coast, but how many of you have been, you know, fishing, whatever, and had an experience in a boat when the storm came? How many of you? Okay, we have one person. You know... We're talking to, oh, to, 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 okay, so we're talking about a, 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 an experience that many people cannot relate to. But in yeah. this group, they knew what it was talking, they knew it. Yeah. Now, let me tell you a story that probably you can't relate to. I, my guess is that many of you have been in an airplane before, okay? Yeah. Now, the other day I was coming back uh, to Nashville, and, and the airport there is a little short, and, 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 and there was a storm, and the planes delayed and all that. My plane was delayed. There was a storm, and, and the captain said, you know, like, <laughs> they're telling you all this stuff that you, sometimes you don't understand what they're saying. And they wake up, like, what, what happened? We're landing. And he says, hey, we're still far away. We're approaching the airport, but there's a lot of turbulence, so you need to fasten your seat belts and so okay, everybody's like you can just fasten your seat belts the, the ladies are running with their cars hiding you know because it seems like and then you hear the plane going shaking yeah. a little bit and they're like oh yeah that's pretty good and, and then, oh and then it goes up and down you remember that feeling when the planes go up and down like whoa oh that was my breakfast out there or what was that and and then suddenly this plane starts to shake and go up and down like you are in I mean it was crazy and I remember hearing a scream from the front ah! it was like a 6-3 football player kind of looking guy screaming like a little girl the person next to me is like oh Jesus it's just I mean this is church right now everybody's yelling Lord God Almighty there was a revival in the plane okay how many of you relate to that? Yes. I mean, it, you just feel like scared. You think like, I'm going to die. Yes. And I didn't pay my bills. And I didn't text my wife. And you, you go through. So that's exactly what the disciples are feeling at this moment. This boat is filled with water. We're going to die. And massive panic. That's exactly. So now we can relate what is happening here in this story. Now, verse 38 says this, Jesus, <laughs> he was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Yeah. <laughs> so the disciples woke him up, shouting him, Teacher, yeah. don't you care that we're going to drown? So when Jesus woke up, he's like, oh, what? what happened? What? He rebukes, watch this, this is amazing. He rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was great calm. What a great story. Now, the best is next. Because then he asked them two important questions. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, you see, Jesus here identifies fear yep. and lack of faith yeah. as our normal human response when we face a difficult situation. Come on. Come on. Got that? Okay, let's put a note here because we're going to go back to that. This is very important. Good. Now, verse 31. The disciples were absolutely terrified. Okay, things are calm. The storm is past. But Mark tells us the disciples were 
totally, absolutely what? Yeah. Terrified. And this is what they said. Who is this man? They ask each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now, I have a picture here, if we can see it. This is the Sea of Galilee, right here. That's the picture, and, and uh, pretty cool. To me, it looks pretty calm. Yeah. Now, the Sea of Galilee is 680 feet below sea level, okay? So it's interesting, and, and the geography, and there's mountains all around it. And I've been there several times, and you, there's a little boat, probably the same size, you know, the, the, the boat, the fishing boat. So probably this is a little bigger. But um, I was with a group of, of, of uh, uh, people in the church, and we were going there, and we're in the Sea of Galilee. Oh, this is so cool. And then suddenly the wind starts to pick up. Mm. And our tour guide is telling us, you know, everybody that reads the story that lives in Galilee knows then this is happening all the time. Because the way that the mountains are yeah. around there, yeah. suddenly the wind can pick up. And there can be gust winds of 65, 70, 80 miles per hour. And in these little boats, sometimes the waves just started to crash and, yeah. and fill the boats. And, and, and it's crazy. So this story is not just uh, a nice story that somebody went. This is based in real facts. Yeah. So well, he, our, our, our guide is telling us wind picks up and this boat starts to, yeah. to rock. So I said, Pastor Fernando, wake up. I said, like, yeah, I woke up, it's be still calm and everything was calm. No, I'm just kidding. I, this is a good story to tell, but that didn't happen. But you see, this is so important to see because I don't know about you, but life sometimes can be so good. Nothing crazy is happening. And all of a sudden, man, you get that phone call, right? Or you get that knock on the door. And then a live storm hits you out of the way. I mean, you didn't plan for that that morning when you woke up, and it just comes. How many know what, to talk, what I'm talking about, right? It happens. Uh, you know, it, they, I mean, it could be you're having a great time in your job, and then you find out your company is laying people, and you might be next. Yep. And man, oh, man, this, that hurts, you know? You're out of a job in a few days. It could be your marriage. I mean, it's been so good. You went through difficult things, and now things are much better than, better than ever before. And suddenly, oh, man, you go to the doctor, and she is really sick, or he is really sick. And now you have, oh, man, we were having the best time. Finally, we're finding some love again, and, some, and now this. And, or you find out that that relationship, then you thought, man, this is it. This is the man. This is the girl. This is it. And then suddenly... There's a breakup, and it, 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 it's horrible. I mean, it, it, or you go to the doctor and get the diagnosis that you were. I mean, this is, this, these are life storms come out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and you feel like the rug is pulled under your you, and, 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 and man, it, 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 and your, your heart is broken, your hope is shattered, yeah. uh, you're, and it's hard. Some of you probably are right now in the middle of a storm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it could be a legal storm, yeah. right? Yeah. It could be a financial storm. Yeah. Oh. You look at your checkbook and it's like, Jesus, this is hard. Yeah. Water is filling in the boat and we're going down. Lord, yeah. help us. Oh, you have a health storm, relational storms, or yeah. whatever. And listen, if you are a real human being, your normal feeling is to be afraid. Yeah. So if you are afraid when a storm hits you, it's not that, oh, you're such a bad Christian. No, it just means you're a human being. Exactly. You're human. It's just normal to feel that way. Now, most people want to deal with their storms and fears in private, yeah, you know, because in one hand, they're ashamed and embarrassed. And, oh, man, I'm going through. I'm not going to tell anybody. On the other hand, they're kind of prideful and they don't, they don't want pity or sympathy, you know, like. And it depends, you know, our history, our experience. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of issues even with racial tensions that are rooted in doesn't matter who. But there's a lot of that stuff, right? You know what I'm talking about. But the main reason is fear. 
We're human beings. We are afraid. In fact, in our culture, in general culture today, we don't like to admit that we are afraid because say, oh, yeah, I'm afraid. It's a sign of being weak. It's a sign of being, you know, like, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not, I mean, you, come on. You, you don't say, even if you do, you don't ever say that. Yeah. In church, people, I'm telling you, we are the worst on this stuff. We fake our emotions and our storm like we're better than that than, than nobody else. Now, can I encourage you that there is nothing embarrassing or shameful about being afraid when you are hit by a storm. There's nothing afraid of that. In fact, there is freedom. When you can come even in the house of God or talk to a dear friend and says, Father, God, I'm afraid right now. This is hard. I'm in the middle of a storm, Lord, and I'm afraid. Now, if I ask you, and we go deep into this, you trust me and I become your close friend, and I've asked you how you're doing, how is that storm? Many of you will raise your hand. I'm in the middle of something. It might be huge. It might be a small, little, tiny storm, but still it's affecting me a big time. Maybe not you. Maybe somebody that you love deeply. They're going through a, such a hard time. And they're not here because probably they decided, you know, this storm is too much. God is not going to. It seems like God is sleeping in the back of this thing. He, it seems like the disciples, it seems like he doesn't care what's going on. Now, the question is not, because you may say, oh, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good now. Many of you say, say no, I'm good. The question is not if. The question is when. Right. Chances are, then if you're not in a storm right now, very soon you will be in a storm. Because that's life. Jesus told us in this world you will face trials and tribulations. But right. be of good cheer. Right. I have overcome. So the question is not if. The question is when. So maybe some of you are in the middle of the storm right now. Some of you may not be right now, but you will be one day. What do you do? What do we do? As we follow Jesus to the other side, what do we do as we face storms? Well, let me bring two things that we always need to remember. Always need to remember when we are facing storms. Number one, you are in the storm with him, with his presence. Jesus is with you in the boat. Okay? And I believe me, it might not sound like a good deal, but it's a huge deal when you understand what that means. He is with you. In the middle of the storm, Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. And believe me, those are great news. Those are the best news. You are not alone. You may feel lonely. You may feel that nobody cares. But you are not alone in the middle of your storm. See, our God is right there with you. You see, here's the problem. A lot of people think that, okay, I gave my life to Christ. I go to church. I stop doing those things that you're not supposed to do. So now my life is going to be, you know, walking through the rainbows and the clouds, eating marshmallows and bacon and all that. Nothing bad. This is so good. Life is so good. Nothing ever bad is going to happen to me because I'm a Christian. And I'm following Jesus. And sadly, many people are selling that as Christianity. That's not Christianity. That is not. Jesus never promised that if you come to him, that life will be easy and that your life will be storm free. That's not what he, he never promised that. In fact, God promised, as I said, then we will face trouble. But that we will never be alone in the midst of our trouble. That's the blessing of Christianity. Then in the midst of our troubles. We are never alone. Yeah. Even in the worst of the situations. Yes. And I don't know what you have been through or what you're going through right now. But I'm telling you, there's nothing. There's not a dark place where Jesus' love can embrace you in that That's point. Right. So if you're doubting right now, oh, I don't, I don't think that God is with me in this. Let me tell you, open your heart and hear what Jesus is saying to you. I am right now yeah. with you. Yes. Yes. And I love this. The storm may rock you, but will never sink you because Jesus is with you. That storm may rock you, may scare you, but it's not going to bring you down. It will not 
bring you down. Jesus is with you. You know, every now and then, some of you, you're going to be in the middle of a storm, or you are right now in the middle of one, and it's going to be really, really, really bad. And people are going to look at you, and they're going to say, man, how are you getting through what you're going through? I mean, I don't get it. How come your world is falling apart, and you're, you're not falling apart? How can you be in the middle of this storm having this kind of weird sense of peace? I don't, don't understand. And what you're going to be able to tell them is, you see, <laughs> Jesus is with me. And, 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 I, and I know that and I get this. He's in the boat with me. He lives in my heart. And because he is with me, he gives me this peace that nobody else can understand to face the storm I'm going through. This, the strength to endure what I'm going through. The power to rise above the storm that I'm going through. You see, I am not alone. I'm with Jesus in this storm. He is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Now it's true. I may not see him. I might not feel it. But he is with me. Listen. Never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God. That's good preaching right there. Come on. Right? Right? I learned that from Pastor Huey. You know like. Absolutely. Never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God. That storm may rock you, but it will never sink you. Jesus is with you in the middle of the storm. And I pray that that message alone will bring comfort right now. I really hope. Now, some of you are hurting in this storm. And you say, Fernando, that's... That's not enough. I'm still afraid. You're a human being. Uh, Jesus didn't guilt trip you in that one. He just asked you. Why are you still afraid? I'm with you. You still have no faith. But you know what? It's okay. We're going to build your faith. That's why you're in the storm. And that's important to remember. The first thing to remember is what? And his presence is with us. The second thing is so powerful. There is a purpose in all this. So you are in the storm for his purposes. When you know that you have the presence of God. And there is a purpose in God's plan for you to be in the middle of the storm. Then that's how you're going to address your fears. And your faith is not going to be little anymore. Your faith starts to grow. Now think about this. And I think this part is hilarious. You know, think when Jesus said, hey, guys, let's cross to the other side. We know that Jesus is all God and all man, right? But we know that he's all God. So as all God, he knows what's going to happen. You know, some of you have some friends and they're going to tell you, hey, let's go over there when they know there's going to be trouble. You know what I'm talking about? And they're like, (laughs) so imagine Jesus going, hey, guys, let's go to the other side. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to cross to the other side. We're going to go in the boat on the other side of the lake. <laughs> and he says, okay, let's go. Go, oh, this is going to be awesome because we're going to get there. And the storm is going to come. And they're going to be like, ah! and I'm going to be like, oh. and they're going like, to and they're gonna freak out. And I'm going to just stop it. And it's going to be awesome, right? He knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows that movie very well. But he takes him there because he has a plan. And you see, this is so important because many people think that if you are in a storm, it's because you're out of God's will. And God somehow wants to punish you because you did something wrong. But that's not the case all the time. I will even tell you this. You might be in a storm because God in his perfect plan, he's going to do something amazing in that storm. And he's going to take you into a much better place because of that storm. Right? Right? You see, this is so good. Now, I will admit, some of us, we get ourselves into our own storms because of our bad choices, right? Yeah. You were sharing a little bit of your story, yeah? yeah? yeah. You, you, you made some bad choices, yeah. like I did, yeah. and you know what? We suffered for it. Yes, right. Sometimes we bring storms into our lives. That's right. But even those storms, Jesus looks at them, I'm going to use the storm. That's right. That's right. There you go. To do something powerful in your life. 
most of the storms we're not custom. Yes, that's right. It's part of life. That's right. So we have to speak to that weird theology that says when you're suffering, you're somehow out of God's will. No, that's Amen. that just I would say that's just garbage. That's right. That's good. That's not the God that we serve. You know, God is not like, oh, you made a mistake. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to put you in a storm so you, you just, just know who I'm, who I'm powerful. Yeah. That's not the God that we serve. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. you see, Jesus, Jesus, the lover of our soul, takes his best friends to the best next thing, yeah. knowing that they would have to go through a storm in order to get there. And that is so important to understand because they were in the storm because they were in God's will. Now, I'm not going to tell you, because I cannot find this in Scripture, that God's plan for your life is for you to be in storms and suffer. Come on. But I will tell you this. God's plan for your life is to prosper you. And right. even when there's storms in your life, God is going to use those storms not yes, to right. sink you, yes, right. but to lift you up, yes, to right. transform you. There's nothing better than a yes. storm to transform your life. Yes, right. You know what experts say? This is not Christian people. This is like oh. smart people without God. They're saying, you know that how people really change? is through pain and suffering. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's the only way that they change. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And God sees that. And I said, the world wants to inflict pain and suffering in you. I'm going to use that yes. to change you, not yes. for the worse, but for my glory, yeah. for my yes. purposes. Because yes. I have a plan for your life, says the Lord. It's a plan to prosper you, to give you hope in a future. Because when he created the world, believe me, he thought in the beautiful you. Yeah. And he thought how beautiful you were going to be yeah. every single aspect. Yeah. Even the things that you look, we look in our mirror and says, I don't like that. God says, I love that about yeah. you. Yeah. Even if you don't like it, I love it. Yeah. He loves yeah. every single detail in your life. And one thing that I have learned through life about God is this. God never, ever wastes a storm. He never wow. wastes a storm. He always wow. uses a storm, not to scare us, not to sink us, but to shape us. Yes. Exactly. It's yes. to shape us. Yes. So don't waste the storms. Wow. Don't waste. Those are good. I mean, I said, what? Yeah. Good storms? Yeah. Well, when you understand his purpose you will see the opportunity that God is giving you. Oh, right. but yeah, probably, the, yeah, it's tough to have it, but my job and my stuff, my marriage and stuff, all these that I'm going through that are difficult, but I'm going to see them as opportunities for God to use that to change me and transform me. You just have to come and say, Lord, change me. Amen. Change me. You see, that's different because many of us, oh, God, please remove the storm. Please stop. Please, God, remove the storm. Please, God, stop. And what probably our best prayer is, Lord, would you please change me Amen. and use this storm yes. to shape Christ yes. in me, less wow. of me and more of you? Wow. Maybe yes. I mean, God is going to take that praise like, I'm going to do exactly that, Praise my beloved. God. I'm going to use this storm. Don't waste a good Praise storm God. in your life. Good. You see, in fact, I will tell you this. Some of you, I will say the big difference between where you are right now and where God ultimate, ultimately wants you to be is the storm that you need to endure. Mm. Don't run away from it. Right. Learn how to ride storms. Yeah. You know, I lived in Hawaii for 14 years. Oh, poor me, somebody had to wow. do that. Yeah. And I met a lot of surfers. And those are crazy people. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're crazy. Yeah. If I see like these high waves, I'm like, I'm not going to get into that, right? Yeah. That's scary stuff. Those guys see like building size waves, like, yeah, they go out and like, are you kidding? You can die. I said, no, you can enjoy this. Yeah. And they have, yeah, there's, you know, and they, you know, sometimes it's believers, followers in Jesus, we need to have that kind of attitude when we see the storms of life coming. It's not that we're like, yeah, suffering, yeah. yeah. No, it's like, hey, that's a great opportunity here yeah. to see the power of God in my life. God is giving us an opportunity here. We're not going to miss it. Don't waste a good storm. Now, I don't know how many of you know somebody who are just, just rock solid in your faith. You know, probably you have a grandma or a mom. You know, you know what I'm talking about. 
They were like amazing in their faith. And you know how they were able to build that faith? They're not going to tell you, oh, yeah, life was good. All the they will tell you, oh, they went through hell back and forth several times. <laughs> That's how they build their yeah. faith. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to be like them. Yes. And we want that kind of faith. Yeah. They will be the first ones to tell you, you know how I got that faith? When I went through that, remember when I went through this? Remember when we lost each other? Remember when I went through that? Remember when? That's when God was shaping me, forming me, building this faith. So I can tell you right now, then God is with you in the middle of the storm. And he has a perfect plan for your life and a purpose as you go through this. And he's not to sink you. It's to elevate you, to prosper you, to transform you. They, these people always know that God is up to something great in the middle of the storm, teaching us things, things that we could never learn in any other way. Mm. Habits that we cannot change any other way. Come on. Mm. In the storm, they go to know God's faithfulness. It's in the storm that they get to know God's grace, mm. God's provision. How in the world you will know God your healer if you never go through a storm of sickness? Yeah. How in the world are you going to meet Jehovah Jireh, your provider, yeah. if you don't go through some seasons of need? That's right. You want to meet him? Come on. The storm is going to reveal him to you. Because that's exactly what happens here. Now, when you read the scripture, you find verses in our kind of, I mean, when my son was diagnosed with autism, I tell you, I was not a happy camper. I was like, oh, praise God, there's some suffering. God is going to transform us. And I, w I was mad at God. I was a church planter. I gave my life for Jesus. I gave it all for him. And I remember just sitting, in the, I was driving a church van, and, and I just pulled over because I was just like fist, fist in the air. God, why you're doing this to us? It was my fear in anger. Yes. I don't get it, Lord. Yeah. And you know what? I find myself, I wasn't the only weird guy that doing that. I, when you find in the scripture, there's like this guy that probably you know about him, King David. He did the same thing. Yep. 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 And there's like this guy called Jeremiah. He did the same thing. He wrote a whole thing about it. He wrote a book called Lamentations. Yeah, that's right. Just complaining to God. God, I don't get it. Yeah. Why in the world are you putting me in this storm? Why are you not coming to help me? Yeah. I don't deserve this. So you think that God is like, oh, you're such a bad person because you like, don't like what's going on. No, you know what God says? Oh, my dear one. You have to get to see. You haven't seen yet the fullness of my power and grace. That's why when you get to verses like James, right? James 1, 2, 4. What? Now, understanding what I just told you, yeah. watch this verse. It says this, James 1, um, let's see the scripture, there we go. Consider it pure joy. Wow. Yeah. Not fake joy. joy. Not the Christian Sunday morning kind of joy, like hallelujah. You know, yeah. not, not that kind of joy, but pure, honest, sincere, 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces Perseverance. Oh, I hate that word. <laughs> Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. <laughs> not, watch this, not lacking any, everybody say anything. anything. You know what the Greek word in anything means? It means anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a promise. Not lacking. I can give you a list of things that I'm lacking right now. And I tell you, it goes back to the beginning. Consider it pure joy. Wow. When you find those places where you, oh Lord, I'm lacking this. I'm lacking faith. I'm lacking this. I'm lacking resources. I'm lacking my job. I'm lacking a love. I'm lacking this. I'm, Lord, then you say, friend, you're in this place because I want to provide what I only can provide. You see, those folks in the boat with the storm, they realize they're trying. They're probably taking water down. <laughs> oh, my gosh, we're going to die. They're trying to do. They're exhausted. The storm is overpowering them. Mm. 
how many times we try to solve our own problems yeah. on our yeah. own and our own issues yeah. to find yeah. ourselves so exhausted when God is right there, That's ready, right. with the power to say, stop, yeah. silence right. the storm, and change yeah. things all around. Yeah. Now, consider it pure joy. Yeah. That sounds a little bit ridiculous. Some of you are thinking, dude, this preacher dude is crazy. You rejoice in the middle of the storms? I told you about my time with my son diagnosis. I have come to storms several times in my life because storms you just come and go, come and go, come and go. I recently, in a, in a new storm, things were just changing in my life with no fault on my own. Decisions were made outside of my realm. <laughs> then affected me, dis disrupted me, affected so many ways, my life, my, my family, big time. Yeah. And man, Jesus came in that middle of this, in the middle wow. of the storm. Wow. What was supposed to sink me actually ended up shaping me. Good. Yeah. And it's according to God's perfect plan. I can tell you there was no plan for me to come to the south, to be in Tennessee and do ministry. That was not my idea. That's what I can tell you. Like, people ask, why you would go to Tennessee? <laughs> the boss, the right. Lord, my right. king is calling me. Right. It wasn't me trying to get water. Oh, where is cool? To, what is a good place to go in? And, and let, let's analyze, analyze this. And I want to study this. And I want to hear what is people saying about this. No, I just went, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Yeah. And, uh, you know, don't run away from the storm. Yeah. Ride that storm. But this is probably, <laughs> to me, the most important part of this story. And, I mean, it's powerful to know that God's presence is with us in the middle of a storm, right? Yeah. It's powerful to know that God has a good plan. He's going to turn the table on the enemy you know when we feel like oh we're gonna die on this guy's honey like boom restores things and does great miracles that's pretty cool but i want to show you something i never saw this until recently many years preaching this many years reading this story because in the sea of galilee the disciples learned something new and powerful about jesus you see like any of us their hope was in their boat to survive but they see that boat is sinking. The water is filling it out. And, and, he's, and they freaking out. They said, teacher. I mean, they, they were panicking. They were not like, Jesus, wake up. No, they were like yelling at him. Yeah. You can imagine the panic. Yeah. And said, D -d don't you care? Yeah. Yeah. Don't we do that? Honestly, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm sorry for you. Oh, you're a pastor. You do that? Yeah. I, I go to God and say, God, don't you care that I'm suffering here? Don't yeah. you care that my babies, my wife, my, yeah. my future, my, don't you care? Yeah. And of course we know the answer. God said, sure. But still, this is what we feel. It looks like you don't care. It looks like you're taking a nap while my life is going down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we know this story. Jesus gets up rebukes the wind, calms the storm, and the scripture tells us that the disciples' eyes were open yeah. to see who really was the one in the boat with them. Yeah. And they said, whoa, yeah. Yeah. who is this? Yeah. Who, who is this guy? He, did, you, did you just see that? He just went like this, yeah. and then everything stopped. Yeah. I, I thought he was the good teacher. I mean, he did amazing things, and he healed people, and that was awesome. And, and we saw them feeding people. But, whoa, the wind listened to him. The waves stopped to his voice. Who is this? This is not just a teacher. This is the Lord Almighty. And the scripture says they were terrified. They were terrified. In the storm, it was revealed to them who Jesus really was. Wow. And that changed their lives yes. forever. Yes. Yes. 
How are you going to meet Jesus, the Lord of your life? He's probably in the middle of a storm. He's probably there. He's probably in the darkest places. When we find his light and his love. It's when we feel completely rejected by those that we give our lives towards. That we find his embrace and his acceptance. I know what it feels to serve and to be treated as a servant. I know that. I can say that. And the big test, we talk about in Christianity, oh, we need to be servants. Everybody talks about it. Oh, I'm a servant. Oh, that's good. Let's treat you as a servant. And let's see if you truly are a servant. But it's when you are rejected, yeah. it's when you are set aside, when you are ignored, when nobody believes in you, that you can find this Lord Almighty, then he's just obsessed with you. Yeah. He's just so in love with you. Yeah. That he will use storms yeah. to shape you, to mold you, yeah. to make the best version of yourself yeah. every single time. In their storms, we open our eyes, and rather than putting our trust in how strong our boat is to resist the storms, we put our trust in the one who is in the boat with us, because yeah. he's the only one that can calm the storms. Yeah. And I'm saying that because for years, I followed Jesus. I knew I believed in Jesus. I served Jesus. I read the Bible. I went to church every Sunday for years. I went to Bible college. I became a pastor. Oh, my gosh. I'm the... I'm probably like the elite of the Christians, right? That's, I'm being sarcastic, okay? So, but I'm, I'm really good. I'm doing all this. But honestly, it wasn't until the storm hit that I met the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. When I realized I am Lord of anything. He is the Lord of everything. I thought I confessed you. I thought I followed you. you but now I realize, and I'm terrified, Lord. Because I'm standing in holy ground. And I'm realizing, Lord, you are not who I thought you were. I thought you were just this good God that always wants to bless me and gives me good things. But now I realize that you're a God that allows certain bad things to happen because you are going to use those bad things according to your perfect plan and purpose to restore me, to redeem me. So other people can see, oh, look what Fernando went through. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's no way that Fernando could get away from that yeah. one. Or the, the, and God, look, God is so real. Maybe God is real with me as well. And you see, your miracle becomes a blessing for so many others. Isn't God genius or what? He is so in love with you. And I'm telling you, just to close, and you guys going to do that thing when it gets super cool? Right there. There we go, brother. (laughs) Now, this is not a gimmick. Believe me. And you guys know this because you guys do this all the time. This is not a gimmick to get all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're closing. Oh, we're getting ready for lunch. Huh? We can think, like, where are we going to go? No. <laughs> this is the Holy Spirit preparing our souls to deposit something in our hearts that is going to bear fruit in years to come. And I believe this is the word that God has for so many of you today. My friends, every storm has an expiration date. But God's purpose is everlasting. Let that sink in your heart right now. Whatever you're going through, as difficult it is, has an expiration date. That pain and suffering is going to go away. Now, it might be that it's not when you want to go away. Probably the most godly person I ever met, my grandmother, she, she suffered a lot in the last year of her life. And um, I'm probably, you, 
I'm sure so many of you can relate. You have these godly women in your life, and you know God's blessings came because these people are praying for you. You know that. You know. I mean, and if you don't have that person, I pray that God will give you one of those, two of those, three of those. But it was so hard to see her going through, and 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 I remember visiting before she she passed, and. And I was saying, Grandma, I, I will do everything I can with every faith that I have to remove this thing from you. And that's what she said. You know, it was so, so clear. It's like, my healing is coming. Not the way that I want it. But my healer is calling me home. Finally, I'm going to be free. She died that night. She went to be with Jesus that night. Every storm has an expiration date. It may not be the way that we want. Then God could have healed my grandmother and gave her 10, 15 more years. Absolutely. But he has a good plan and good purpose. It was time for her to go home. And she was at peace with that. Because she knew God was with her. And God had a purpose. She's a champion of the faith, at least for me. I, don't, I haven't met any other person with faith so great. You know that she believed that everybody, everybody, and I'm saying everybody in my family would come to Christ. She had the faith to believe that. And God honored that conviction. Every single member of my family came to Christ. She believed that. In the same faith, the part she believed, God, you can heal me. The Lord said, not this time, dear. I'm going to heal you my way. Every storm has an inspiration that God's purposes are everlasting. His good plan for you is never going to change, my friend. When you made a mistake, when you know you did. When you go, oh, God, I did it again. I, I'm so sorry. Now all my blessings are going to go away. And the Lord says, my plan is everlasting. I'm not going to change my mind about you. I'm going to still love you and pursue you. Corner you with my grace and my love and mercy. Until you change. And sometimes the change comes through difficulties and storms. His plan is everlasting. Now, let's remember that in each storm we are in his presence. That we are for his purpose. So don't put our trust... Let's stop putting our trust in the boat, whatever boat we build, our money, our experience, our own wisdom to deal with the storm. We put our trust in the one, the one who is in the boat with us. And we get to know him more intimately, the one who is in the boat with you. Get to know him. Fellowship, not just here at church at 11, from 11 to 12.30, maybe 12.30, something. Well, you want to talk already? I'm going to, I mean, okay. He will mature you. He will grow you in the middle of the storms. So endure those storms with Him. Connect with Him. Wake Him up. Let Him wake you up. Suddenly, this is what happens. When the boat seems that He's going to sink, you will not be afraid anymore. And your faith will grow. That's the difference. Your trust is no longer in a boat. Your trust is not in anything else in you, but it's in the Lord who is in the boat with you. And He will always deliver the goods. His presence and His purpose will prevail. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I want you to just bow your heads with me. I know Pastor Hugh may come. I don't know who's going to come after me and pray again. But I feel like praying a blessing over your life. Is that okay? Let's minister in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now, especially for my dear brothers and sisters here in Huntsville, Five Points Campus, Restoration Church, and say, Father, I'm in the middle of a storm. Or maybe they say, Father, somebody that I love so much is in the middle of a storm. They need a touch from you, Father. We need a touch from you in the middle of our storms. So, Father, in your sovereign love, 
You know the details of every single situation of these precious brothers and sisters here. And Lord, not only do I pray that you would calm the storm, because I believe you can, as you often can and do, but God, I really want to pray your will into this. Then if you don't calm the storm right now, I pray that your divine presence will manifest in the middle of the storm and bring a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And Father, I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit will bring real comfort in the middle of the storm. And Lord, in your presence, I pray that we will start a sense of purpose, that we will understand your plan, that is good for all of us. That you're doing something powerful as we go through this storm. That you're teaching us something that we could not learn any other way. Father, we trust and in your presence, Jesus, Jesus, in your presence, there is hope. Even in the middle of the worst of storms. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to cling to Jesus, the anchor of our soul, only in him. And always believe that Jesus is more than enough. And Father, I pray for miracles because you're not a dead God. You're still active. You're still doing great things. And Father, then the storms would pass quickly. Then there will be healing. Then there will be wholeness, forgiveness, restoration. God, that the storms would be still in Jesus' name. But even more so, then we would know the everlasting presence and the glory of your son Jesus in the middle of the storm. And as your heads are down and you're, and, you're, and, and, and you're praying before the Lord, I wouldn't wait. I would just take this moment, a few moments. Your pastors are going to come and lead you in this moment. But if you need to restore that connection with the Lord, if you're saying, Lord, I'm afraid and my faith is so small, and you pray and you come to Him, and you reconnect with Him again, and you put your trust in Him again, and then if you need to repent, Lord, I'm being putting my trust in my boat. I've been trying to survive this storm on my own, and I need to put my trust in you. I pray that you will not let pa pass this opportunity today. God is about to do something powerful in your life. And wait for the miracles to come. Wait for Jesus to manifest his glory in your life. We thank you, Father. precious people say amen and amen would you give god all the glory and honor and praise?